Guess where, folks? It's that time of the year, and we're making a gumbo. Let's get it. All right, folks, now listen, I'm not finna fake no funk. You guys can look right here, you can see there's quite a bit of the ingredients right here. And listen, when I say gumbo, if you ask me, you gotta have the uh, okra in there, right? So I went ahead and just diced everything down, cut it up, chopped it up, sliced it up, and did all of that so that we don't have to watch that. But you guys can look at the size. And when you look at, when you look at my dicing of the veggies, you see I dice small. And what is small for? That's right, small is for taste, and large is more so for the texture. Now, don't forget the full ingredient list, the and is printable, is on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. All right, so look, I went ahead and put some heat under here. I got like a, just a medium heat on the bottom of my pot, right? What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start with my andouille sausage. Drop that in here. We just wanted to release some of the flavor, right? And to possibly, you know, put some, uh, you know, a little bit of, of cook time on each flat piece, right? So, what I'm doing now is just ensuring that each piece is on the bottom. And as it heats up, you know, this andouille right here, this flavor that's in here, it's gonna start turning orange and releasing an orange, you know, andouille sauce down on the bottom. All right, so you can see, if you look down there, you know that the pan was the, the color of the pot, right? So it was that, you know, metallic silver. You see how it's starting to render some brown. Let me just move this around. You know what I mean? This is gonna release some flavor in here. We gonna get all that up when we make a roux. This is gonna be key. So, I'm just gonna keep moving this around like this. You know what I mean, get it to be flat. Now, let's just talk about this being gumbo. This is my version of gumbo. They got all types of uh, gumbo, right? You got chicken and sausage, you know, seafood. Uh, you guys let me know down in the comment section below what other uh, gumbos do they have. This is not an authentic recipe, but I promise you, when you do it like this, if you have the means to put everything that I'm putting in this one right here, you guys are gonna be well into the game, I promise you. All right, so look down in there right there. That right there is right. You don't wanna put too much on them, you know what I mean? You just wanna release some of that flavor. This all helps with the taste of the root, right? So, we just take these out. Look at that right there. You see that? That's what you wanna have, right? That's a perfectly one done right there. Not too dark, just enough to heat them up, put a little, you know, a little light crust on there and to release the flavors inside your pot. All right, folks, so look, I just turned down my fire, you know, all the way down to like super low because you can see just a little bit of smoke coming over here. That's going to be a little bit on the hot side. Now, let me explain this part right here, too. So look, when you look at the recipe, you can use either or. I have enough bacon drippings or, you know, bacon fat, you know what I mean, to go ahead and use the whole complete, but I like to do a little combination of both, right? So I'm gonna add butter, and I'm gonna mix it in with a little bit of this bacon grease, right? So, I'm probably gonna put in about a quarter cup. So with like about a quarter cup, then be careful. I didn't mean to drop that in there like that, because that, Hot bacon grease and get all over and splatter, you know, make them ugly marks on your body, right? And now we'll just do a half a cup of butter. This right here is a nice combination, folks. I don't worry about what's stuck down at the bottom. We all know what that is. You know, when you talk to me down in the comment section below. Let me know what is that down there on the bottom? What is that? Okay, so bacon grease, right? My butter is good. Now we get ready to go ahead and add our flour, right? You know, I just move this around. But this is gonna be key when making a roux. Listen, once we get this all, you know, mixed up, we want it to be nice and smooth, no lumps, right? And I won't stop stirring this for at least 20 minutes. I do take a break every now and then, you know what I mean? But you wanna get it all incorporated. And so what we wanna do is we wanna get it to be a dark brown like chocolate, right? So, all right, so obviously you can see that I'm using a square edge wooden spoon, right? Which is really like bamboo. So if I move this around like this and I'm rubbing the bottom of that, remember we had that fine? You guys can see it when I move it back. You know what I mean? So you might get some of the fine that comes up right now at this stage, right? Well now, people know that you can make a roux and if it burns, it start having them little black specks. But right now at this stage, you know that we're not burning it. We got the heat on a medium heat. Listen, slow is the right way to do it. I wanna let you guys know I have never ever burned a roux in my life. It's because one, I don't try to rush it, but now I've been making, making so many of them, I can rush it and get this dark in about 10 minutes. You know what I mean? So, But right now we just wanna keep moving this. Don't let it sit on the bottom long. Just keep stirring. You see how it is? And we, I'm gonna show it to you in stages. You look at this color right here, that, that's that tan. Next time you're gonna see it, I'm gonna show it to you when it get a little bit more on the brown side. 
You know what I mean? And then ultimately, we want to have a dark root that looks like chocolate. Okay, so look, this would be stage two where I just want to show you this. Now, that's a gradual stage, right? We start, start out that light tan. Now look at it. Now it's starting to look like peanut butter, right? When you get here, that's good. Don't worry about the little specks because if you guys use Andouille, you know what I mean? We had that fine on the bottom and I keep constantly, you know, doing this, especially on the edge, look. So it kind of like picks some up. But don't worry, we're going to get all of that fined up once we put them veggies in there. Don't forget them onions going to have that acidity, you know what I mean? And all of that's going to help pick all of that up. And this is the flavor and the process of making a good roux. Okay, so I want you guys to take a look right there. Look at the color now. Now we look like chocolate, right? Which is cool. So I can just move this around. Now we're getting ready to add our onions, right? So I'm going to move my hands here. I'm going to just drop some of these down here like that. It's going to sizzle because you know onion is like, what, 80% water. We putting this in here on hot grease and all of that, right? So we'll just move this around just to get it going. And I'm gonna be very cautious here, not to make too much of a splash so I don't burn myself. And guess what, folks? We got the onions in. Those of you guys been with me for a minute know I like to give my onions just a little bit of a head start. Seems like to me it takes onions a little bit longer, you know, to break down, right? So after a minute of me just moving these around right here, letting them, you know, start to cook down, Right, and then I go ahead and start adding the rest. Right, so now I'm gonna come with my bell peppers. Now listen, everybody looks for a recipe that they can make to make it, you know, so it'll come out right, right? You guys can do it the way I do it, but there's certain things that I like that you might not like or you want more of that I don't put enough in there, right? So that's how you customize, you know what I mean? So that's what I like to do. I put you in the ballpark and then after you taste it, you say, man, maybe I should have put a little bit more onion in it or a little less onion. You know what I mean? Uh, this is how you cook and make things your own, right? So now I'm gonna come with my celery. And then we give everything a stir. Now you see how it kind of is starting to thicken up here, right? That's where your broth is gonna come in at, right? Now there's things you can do to level up your broth. You know what I mean? I've heard of people putting in, you know, chicken, you know, chicken bouillon, you know, for more flavor. Again, we're getting away from it being authentic, but we're making something that's great. You know what I mean? Uh, trust me, folks. But this is what you want to see. Look how thick that is, right? And then we got the fine down at the bottom. It's starting to come up. That's because of the acids inside of this onion and all your veggies are starting to work, right? So we just leave this like this. All right, so I'm looking at my onions. They're starting to get soft, usually because I'm using a uh, square edge, right? When I put it down like this, and it cuts it and it snapped through, that tell me they got, I want mine to be down a little bit further. So it's almost ready, you know what I mean, for me to go ahead and, uh, actually I'm gonna go ahead and add my sauces now. I'm just gonna continue to, you know, cook them. All right, now I'm getting ready to add my garlic, my minced garlic. Okay, so you guys, if you measured out all your ingredients, you should have some ingredients left over, right? So I want you guys to come here and look at this right here. Look, I took everything, Minus the sugar, I'm gonna tell you about the sugar. This is completely optional, right? But I take all of that, minus the filet and the uh, the bay leaves, right? Right, so I'm gonna take all of my seasoning and start adding it here and start cooking everything together, right? So you just wanna dump them, just like you see. And this right here, this is my Creole kick. This is what gives us that, that authentic, you know, flavor, right? So now we want to get in here and start stirring it up, mixing it all together, just like this. I know I haven't put no broth in here, but I like to get everything concentrated like it is. Okay, so now, if you guys haven't figured out by now, remember I said this is not an authentic recipe, you know, for gumbo, right? They got a Creole gumbo, a Cajun gumbo. What I'm doing is I'm mixing all of the good flavors, you know, from the South, folks. This is what it is. It's just a great tasting gumbo. And you know, obviously we, I got chicken, we got shrimp, okra, you know what I mean? Uh, we put the sauces in the inside, you know what I mean? Then we even got the crab meat. So it's really a chicken, sausage, and seafood, you know, gumbo with all of the flavors from the South, right? So now I'm getting ready to go ahead and add this. I, my petite diced onions and check this out. I didn't even, you know, I didn't do anything as far as uh, like doing any drainage. I just add that to it now. All right, so we just give this a mix. Cook this down. This kind of like loosens it up, folks. This right here is nice. So when I run this across down the bottom, you can see all of that fine is just coming up. 
you know what I mean? Uh, this is where you get your flavors from, folks. If you guys didn't know that, you gotta go, you know, you gotta cook, know how to get it up off the bottom, and usually that onion, any vegetable that has acidity in it, you know what I mean, some type of acid to it, will work just fine for you. Now you wanna go ahead and start adding your broth, right? So we just start adding this. Be careful, folks, because everything in there is hot. You don't want anything to like splash back and to bite you with some burns, right? All right, so if you look down here right now, we back up at a boil, right? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this down so that we have a simmer, right? So I'll leave it like that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add, you know, my chicken. Now the reason we add our chicken, you know, early in the game, we want to, the flavor from our gumbo to go ahead and to marry with the chicken, right? That's up to you guys how much you wanna put in here. I cut all of this. This is a lot. This was like three uh, breast. You know what I mean? Uh, you ain't gotta go that much, but I like for mine to be a little bit on the meaty side. You know what I mean? When I eat it, I like to be able to taste it. You can see it starts to cook right away, but because it's like in a, a soup, like in a gumbo, it never dries out, folks. You know what I mean? This right here is right. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, check it out. I'm finna add it all. I just told you I like for mine to be what it's gonna be. And if you know me, I like it to be meaty. Right, so, the only thing you should have is like filet and a little sugar, right? Now, let's talk about the tomato sauce. I'm gonna add just a little bit to it. Like I said, we putting the flavors from the south in here, right? You guys add as much as you would like to. This is when you wanna taste it and find out if you wanna add anything to it, you know what I mean, as far as your seasonings go, right? Now, the reason I got the sugar, the acidity from the tomato, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't need to taste it, I already know. I just give it a boom, boom. Right, that's just to break it up. You know what I mean? Uh, you can't taste it, no, it's not gonna be sweet. Trust me, when you go to these restaurants and you eating, you don't know what they put in there, all you know is, man, that was good. To be honest with you, I'm gonna add a little bit of this filet to it now, and I'm gonna add some at the end. Now, normally when I make this, cause some people say they don't like the taste of uh, filet, I usually put the filet out on the table so anybody has a bowl, they can just add it to their own bowl, right? It's perfect. I don't taste none of that bite from the tomato, no nothing. Now we finna cook this and let this uh, simmer for about an hour, right? After that, a lot of our veggies and all that stuff are gonna disintegrate and that's gonna make the flavor just right. Now, we got okra, shrimp, crab meat, you know what I mean? We got some filet left and I can move this out the way because I'm not putting no sugar, no more sugar in there. This is what we add in due time. Right, so let's go ahead, set a timer for one hour, and let's just see where we at when we're done there. All right, so look, if you guys pay attention, this is my burner. This is what you guys see and ask about all the time. For me making videos, I usually use the burner because it's easier to use and to face the camera, right? Now, if we work our way back here this way, I put it actually on my stove because I need to bring it back up to a boil, right? So I'll take this off. It's already boiling. And the reason I'm letting you guys know that, because listen, I left off my bay leaves, right? So, got this going. Oh yeah, this is gonna be nice, folks. You know what I mean? Just drop this in here like that. You know what I mean? Let it do its thing. Now I'm gonna set it up. Once it starts to boil, we just wanna get a simmer going. Again, we are gonna go for one hour. Okay, so look, my timer just went off. It's already been an hour, right? So let's go ahead and take a look right now. Right, let me get this and let's stir it. Look at that. This is what you want. You want everything to like cook down, right? You want to release all of the flavors. You remember those big onions and all of that? You hardly even see any now, but we got a little bit more cooking to do, right? That's starting to look like gumbo, folks. Now, what we wanna do is, I have, you know, just natural, you know what I mean? This was uh, just fresh okra. I'm gonna go ahead and add this right now, and I'm gonna cook it for about 45 minutes. Now listen, you guys can use, you can use, listen to this, you can use frozen, then you only need about 30. You know, because the process they had when they cleaned, you know, like kind of like pre-washed, I mean, pre-cooked it, right? But if you're using fresh like me, we just want to go about 40, 45 minutes, right? Put this on the top, set a timer for 40 minutes, and then we'll come back to it. And then that's when we go ahead and add our uh, shrimp and the rest of our seafood. Even if you got crab, you can add that too. All right, folks, so listen, I didn't transfer it from my stove, brought it back over here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and break this away from myself, right? Then we're finna just give this a stir. Oh yeah, this gumbo, folks. Can you see in there? Look at that. You see that right there? Look at the consistency, consistency of the gumbo. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, this is it right here. 
And if you see a little bit of grease on the top, only reason why, don't forget I use that chicken andouille. It released a lot of its grease in the inside, right? Now, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna leave my fire on. You can see that we still got a simmer going on. I'm getting ready to add, check it out, I'm gonna add my shrimp, right? Now that I got my shrimp in there, now, we're finna add our crab meat. It's up to you if you wanna do it and make them small. You know, like I can take them like this. I'll just use, it, use this for an example. If you wanna break them up like that, but when you paying for lump crab meat, you wanna use it. I mean, you wanna be able to taste it. So you see how these are right here? I just break these up. Just enough that I can get these in here. And then once I'm done with that, then I'm gonna turn this fire off and I'm gonna let the heat, you know, from the gumbo just continue to cook these to warm this up, right? Now, you wanna get in here and stir this up. Look at that right there. I know y'all thinking right now, like, AB, you ain't right. I know you want some. The reason I left the fire on there, because we put in cold, I had it back in the refrigerator. I didn't want it to cool too much, right? I still want the residual heat that's in my pot, you know, to cook and warm up. Now I'm gonna add the rest of my filet powder in here. Now, I'm gonna tell you, if I didn't say it earlier, I'd normally put the filet, you know, powder on, on the table and then each individual person that has a, a bowl, they can go ahead and just add some to their bowl, right? But I'm gonna do them like this. And I'm gonna let this cook for about five minutes. I'm gonna turn the fire off. And then after that, I'm gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes, right? And then we gonna go ahead and serve. Now, gumbo is served best with what? You guys got it, rice. All right, folks, so listen, we put our seafood in here. I let it run for five minutes with the uh, fire underneath the bottom of it. Then I turn it off and then I let, I'm gonna let it, this process right now is just letting it cook in the residual heat, right? Meanwhile, we coming up on about 15 minutes total of putting that uh, seafood in anyway, right? Now I'm just gonna show you this right here. And you guys see I got this little, I call it like a little bowl plate type setup, right? This is what everybody you see on the internet do. You know what I mean? You see how they put the rice in the inside so they have a the little mound of rice. I'm gonna just show you how you do it. Show you how you don't have no problem, right? So look, I got some rice right here, right? So now I'm just gonna take this, and just spray it because we want it to release, right? This is a non-cooking spray, right? So now I'm gonna take some and just put it in here and then I'm gonna pack it in and get it nice and tight. Oh, right. Now you guys know how everybody getting this. If you didn't know already, you know what I mean? I just want to bring everybody up to speed, especially when you make this for the first time. You got to get yourself one of these little candy dishes. Obviously, I use them to measure out my ingredients. You know what I mean? So pack it in like this. We sprayed it with the non-cooking spray. We dropped this in the center. Right, let me move it over. Once I got it in the center, like, like that right there, then I just go ahead and just pull this up, just like that. And that's how they doing it, folks. All right, so let me hit it with this ladle so you guys can see. Look at that right there. You see those shrimp? You see how they open up right there? Because they was already, you know, cut and deveined, right? So when they open up like that, you know they tight. I mean, they cooked, and when they curl up, right? So, ooh, chicken. You guys see the okra. Anyway, I'm not finna like torture you guys or myself. Shit, we finna go in here and uh, get us some of this. All right, so I just take it and just put it in right along the side, just like that. If you guys wanna leave the bay leaf in, you can. You know what I mean? Uh, you can do whatever you wanna do. This is your creation. You know what I mean? You do it how you would want to. I'ma leave them, you know, those in, just so that I can have some, uh, you know, some flavor in the inside. Now, anything that gets on the side, I'm gonna go ahead and just like wipe it and clean it. Hey, so check it out, folks. I don't know if you can see it on my face. I done tasted this a couple of times just by dipping a spoon in there. Look, if I do it like this and I take it off, look how I coach that. That right there is right, folks. I'm not finna uh, be doing all of that, you know what I mean? Uh, I gotta hit it with this rice. Let's try a little bit of this. Let's make sure that I got the uh, the shrimp cooked perfectly. You know what I mean? We don't want to like overcook it. And as it cools, then it stops the cooking process, right? So remember, that whole 15 minutes, that's all you need. Mm. Cheers. Oh yeah. This right here is fire. Now look, let me, let me stress the importance of having an apron, folks. I just happened to look down after, you know, I took that taste right there, and so I had it here. How my people behind the camera did not see that, I don't know. But you know what? They've been telling me they want some of this gumbo, so they might have been focused on the wrong thing. You know what I mean? But listen, that goes to show you, 
you got to be able to protect your clothing. You know what I mean? That's why I got these denim aprons right here. Throw them in the washing machine, wash them up, you know, wash them, let them hang dry. You know what I mean? Do a little press and then boom, you back in the game. Now, this right here is really more, these flavors I put together remind me how my grandmama made it, you know, back, you know, when I go down south, you know what I mean? Uh, my great grandmama made it. She makes it more like the way I did in my previous videos, but my grandmama, you know, down there in Mobile, Alabama, she made hers. It really tastes just like this, right? But she did cook with a little bit of that filet too. Now, let me know in the comment section below what you think about what you've seen, all of that. You know what I mean? Let's start a conversation. I want to read them, find out what I can do to maybe level it up. You know what I mean? You guys might expose me to something new. Now, with that being said, I want to take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And guess what, folks? I'm out. Peace.